All right, let's talk about Josh Dobbs. How about Josh Dobbs in the Minnesota Vikings offense here, finding a way to get a victory? It started off a little bit rough. Like, we'll start off with this play. Not ideal. A uh, couple of negatives to you know bring things up. First, the situation, third down and 12 here. So, you know, got to be paying attention to getting rid of football quickly. A lot of times sacks do happen on these third down and 12 situations, third down and long situations, because, you know, trying to wait a little bit longer for something to get open. That just gives the, you know, pass rushers sometimes that extra half second they need to turn pressures into sacks. As you see, Dobbs takes the snap and realistically should be getting rid of football. Didn't really have a check down on that play though, which was part of the issue. So, you know, again, learning how to, I'm mean, really learning how to run the offense on the fly a lot of times on these plays. Obviously, that's not an ideal play. You would have loved to see him get rid of the football earlier there. Like, it wasn't a perfectly clean day. It wasn't. This play, which uh, was actually a fumble, not a, a you know, interception, but it's an interesting one where, again, you know, it looked bad. It, it, the replay actually made it look not as worse, but third down and two right here, you're going to see Josh Dobbs take the snap, and there's going to actually be pressure comes that knocks the football out. It looked like he threw it right to a defensive lineman. That's not what happened. It got knocked out and bounced right to a defensive lineman, so still not good, again, but not a disaster necessarily in terms of, like, bad play, more so just not looking great out there, maybe not being fully in sync, not knowing exactly, you know, how your offensive lineman moves and stuff like that. These are part of the, you know, the, the things about playing for a team that you have just met, really. And like this plays actually a perfect example of kind of what I'm talking about. Of So it's just a, a pass protection issue where you have the center who's blocking towards your right. Uh, but the issue was that, you know, you see the Atlanta players I put in that yellow box. There are currently five of them in that box. Three of them are to the offense's left, only two to the offense's right. Despite that, the center is blocking towards the offense's right. This is a pretty easy fix, actually. You have the center block towards your left, and then no matter what, unless there's a defensive back blitz, you're covered right here. Instead, there ends up being a free rusher towards the left, and you see now Dobbs has to try and make something happen. So this is a good example of, you know, just the issues you have playing for a new team, right? But it's also a good example of how Josh Dobbs was making things happen, because you notice I've paused this play. It's not over right here. Watch Josh Dobbs scramble outside the pocket. He's going to end up picking up a first down on this play, despite the fact that, you know, the, okay, listen, you know, not on the same page with the you know, protection, probably should have told his center to get over, but maybe he, you know, tried to and didn't, you know, I don't know what the com communication thing was, but he still found a way to make something good happen. And that is probably the motto of this game for Minnesota is they found a way to make something good happen. Something like this. It's going to be a third down and eight here for Atlanta. They're up eight points. And, and I'll just be honest. When I found out Josh Dobbs is going to come in on, you know, after four days of being a Viking, there was no way I was thinking that the Vikings were going to find a way to win this one. Not at all. Uh, on the podcast, I locked up the Falcons to win, and I felt good about that lock. Felt like that was the good choice by me. Um, but credit to Josh Dobbs for finding a way uh, because on this play, third down and eight, going to be just a three-man rush. So eight players in coverage. Watch as Dobbs is going to take the snap. He is going to look down the field, doesn't love what he sees, nothing's open. So he starts scrambling. And really the legs and the mobility of Dobbs are what worked here, where it gets you know, outside the pocket. You have a defender who's now going to move in to try and make sure Dobbs doesn't run. And because of that, Dobbs noticed this, notices this and sees TJ Hawkinson He's going to flip the ball to TJ Hawkinson, and they pick up a first down on third down and eight. That type of play is just so crucial. And again, it's not really something that, you know, we talk about chemistry and understanding the rule book and all that. Well, this is just backyard football. Everyone knows how to do this. It's just, can you physically be able to pull it off? Most guys can't, but Josh Dobbs was able to do that on this play. And I would also, I, I would say that, you know, chemistry is still a little bit important here, right? I mean, you know, understanding where Hawkinson is going to go and stuff like that, uh, you know, you don't know. You're kind of guessing a little bit, whereas if you've played for 10 years, you will know how that works. But still, uh, great way to make something positive happen. But let's fast forward a bit to this final drive. Um, you know, 52 seconds left in the game for Minnesota. It's a fourth down and seven. Uh, if they don't get this, 
the ball game's over. They only have two timeouts left. So the ball game is over. The Falcons can kneel out the clock. They might have to you know, throw the ball away once to fully kill the clock. But the game is over. Atlanta is going to be playing cover two man here. So potential you know, opportunity for Dobbs to scramble if he sees an opening. But pay attention to that matchup with the left tackle and an edge rusher for Atlanta. As you see right when this play begins, it's, there's going to be an immediate pressure. And Dobbs is in a little bit of trouble. I mean, again... How many quarterbacks take a sack here? If we're being honest, Kirk Cousins probably takes a sack here, right? Obviously, I think Kirk Cousins is a really good quarterback, just in this instance, might not go so well. But Dobbs, who doesn't love what he sees down the field, watch him first get somehow around that sack and move up here. And at this point, again, maybe you could try and throw down the field, but it's going to be tough and you have several players on you. This is a difficult situation, but we're going to see the speed of Josh Dobbs here. Watch him run by the two defenders in the area and even makes another guy miss just for good measure. Uh, you know, I cut it a little short just because of copyright reasons. Can't let a play play for too long or I'll get a claim. But uh, he got, even got out of bounds on that play. So really good stuff to help move, you know, keep moving the ball down the field. And also going over here. So this one was, I mean, a big one, right? Now it's third out and four. So, okay, if you don't get this, you do have another chance. But that's it. So got to make something happen for sure. Uh, it's going to be zone coverage. It's going to be actually Jordan Addison's route, the one that's going to essentially sit right on the goal line. You have a clear out route in the area against zone coverage, so hopefully it can get open on this play. Watch as Dobbs is going to take the snap. He doesn't look there right away, but he essentially looks there right away. I believe that's where he was always going to look, just you know, glanced off for a second to hopefully not give away what the team is doing against zone coverage. A lot of players are looking at the quarterback's eyes, so good stuff. And now you see Addison is, he's wide open here in the end zone. So, you know, cool. At the same time, though, like, I will say this, in a big game, a big spot, uh, it's easy to miss a throw like this. I mean, how often have we seen in the most crucial moments someone drops a pass or doesn't put on a perfect throw? It happens. The pressure gets to certain guys in big moments, but for Dobbs, he puts this one right on the money, and the Vikings are able to pull off this victory and go five and four. And again, I don't know what to make of Josh Dobbs because his you know short stint in Arizona, he kind of would have one good game and then one not so good game, uh, and even the good game wasn't always great. But of course, you know, due to low expectations, when he played poorly, people kind of forgot about it. But when he played well, people brought it up. It was not perfect in Arizona is most, mostly what I'm trying to say. But I don't know if he has to be perfect here in Minnesota. The way you see the playoff picture currently, at least the way I see it, is, okay, I think that for the, you know, for the divisions currently as it stands, Philadelphia, San Francisco, Detroit, and New Orleans are the four division leaders. And I feel good about those four winning their division. But then for the wildcard teams, you have, again, I think Dallas and I think Seattle both feel like they could be wildcard teams. But for the seventh seed, it is wide open. I mean, the Commanders are four and five. The Rams are three and six. Uh, I don't know how you can feel great about them after this loss. Uh, I guess Green Bay is still in it at three and five. Tampa Bay, I guess, is still in it at three and five. Atlanta is four and five, who Minnesota just beat. So now you have the head-to-head tiebreaker in that scenario. And you're five and four. You're currently the seven seed if you're Minnesota. Uh, so for Dobbs, I mean, yeah, why can't they be a playoff team? Really, I kind of do feel like if you go 9-8, and eight, that probably would be enough to, to get you in. You have winnable games on your schedule. You you know play the Saints. That actually could be a b big game uh, this next week to get in. You play Denver. You play Chicago again. Green Bay again. Las Vegas. And then, I mean, you do have a couple tough games. You have uh, Cincinnati. You played the Lions twice. But, like, it's not out of question. That's all I'm saying. It's not out of question. And uh, it's not out of question because of the great work Dobbs did in this game without knowing the playbook. Incredible stuff. Those are my thoughts. What are yours? Let me know in the comments below. Always love hearing from you. And of course, as always, thanks for watching.